My son's been missing. And you just tell me his phone is at the cemetery? What's up, Team Jazzy? It's your girl, Jazzy J, and I am back with another month vlog. So today's true crime is going to be about, about a guy who went missing. And when his father called his phone, someone answered it. His phone was at the cemetery and he's missing. So yeah, we're gonna get into that. Today I will be mukbanging some Chana Masala. I don't know, it's hard for me to pronounce. I am so sorry if I'm saying it wrong, please charge it to my head and not my heart. I don't have time to look up how to say it the correct way, but I made this bread, guys. So it is called, it's spelled Puri, P-U-R-I, but it's pronounced Purdy, Putty, Putty is how it's pronounced. And it, you, I fried it. It's flour and you just fry flour and it's really good, I already tasted it. And I didn't do too good in the beginning. Like it's all folded up and stuff. But the real deal looks like these. And they're supposed to be crispy. Like when you cut them open, when you tear it apart, it's just like a flat piece of bread. And then you're supposed to grab it and then eat. And this is made with like chickpeas, curry seasoning, tomatoes, onion. I made this before on this channel. Mm. I am pray. Give this video a big thumbs up on the simple fact that my house is a mess, y'all. My kids is home, my nephew is here with us, and I'm still pushing through and giving you guys this true crime. So that's why you gotta like this video. I'm gonna pray, cause this is so, Oh, this is good with the bread. The bread by itself was kind of good. Okay. Hey, Team Jazzy. Want to get to know me better? Keep up with me on a personal level by joining my membership. All you have to do is click join beside the subscribe button. I'm so excited to share some exclusive content outside of true crimes. Amen. All right. So let's get into this true crime. Mm. This is really good. I just hope my kids, see they're already yelling for me. Mom. I put them in my bedroom and put a movie on. Pop popcorn, the whole nine. I'm like, I just need 15 minutes because this is a short true crime. But it's a good one. So his name is Sean Arthur. Mm. I need to throw a thumbnail. Mm. Okay, wait. Let me go get them situated. So Sean was a um, family oriented. He was very close with his parents. He was very close with his parents and um, he got a job. He, he, he struggled in school to graduate, but he, they made it. And so he just got some little temporary job. Um, it was like a flood project and it was in New Orleans. He was from Kansas and he moved to New Orleans for a temporary job. Mm, this is good, I'm sorry guys, it's gonna get messy today. I do want to mention this is my second time having Indian food on this channel. So, he moves to New Orleans and he ends up falling in love with the woman. That one was good. Well, he fell, he fell in love, love, like, he said, I want you to be my wife. I want to marry you. And she said, yes. And that was engaged and everything was good. Well, 
she noticed that they wasn't um, compatible. Mm. They wasn't compatible. And so she called off the engagement. She dumped him. And he was, of course, he was sad about it. Like, she gave back the ring and everything. So they moved out. He moved into a little small apartment. And he was just like, after the heartbreak, he's like, what's the point? I just need to move back in with my um, parents. Go, I need to go back to Kansas. But because I am a man of my word and I start what I, I finish what I start, I'm going to finish out this job. I'm going to wait till it's over with. Then I'll move back to Kansas. I did that. This is good. Mm-hmm. So, he was working so much. He was working like 100 hours a week, but he, was, he still kept in touch with his parents. They talked every single day. And that was their only son. And, you know, I can imagine the worry that a parent would have when their child moves into a different state, no matter how old they are. This is so good. Well, his dad had set him up a phone conference with a lawyer because he was really trying to get back to Kansas, but he had, was already in his lease. And so, you know, they're just trying to do things the right way. They don't want, he don't want to break his lease. So he's like talking to a lawyer to, to see his options. Well, the dad is the one that set it up. So Sean was like, I'm going to call y'all Saturday at 1030. I finally have a weekend off that I'm excited about. It's my first weekend off since a long time. And... I'm going to go out and I'm going to have fun. I'm going to kick it. But I'm going to call you at 10.30 a.m. sharp. Well, the next day comes 10.30 a.m. No phone call from Sean. And they thought that was strange because Sean is punctual. Sean is the man of his word. And he did what he said he was going to do down to a phone call and when they call and he didn't answer they instantly got worried and so they called his phone numerous times no answer he had two cell phones and so they kept calling both of them Finally, the phone picked up. But it wasn't Sean. He said, hello? He was like, his dad was like, who is this answering my son's phone? And he said, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know whose phone this is, but I found it at the cemetery. What? Like, what? imagine his heart, the father's heart dropping. My son's been missing. And you just tell me his phone is at the cemetery? So. He hangs up with him. He instantly calls the police. I need a wellness check. So the police get there. They find Sean's body. He was dead. But he was naked, waist down. And his house was like, had empty alcohol bottles everywhere. A whole bunch of like 
drug caps it's like capsules from drugs but they were emptied out it was powder on the table there was a a, a empty whiskey bottle in the bathroom um and all of the cabinet doors was open and the refrigerator door was open and so they called his father they called sean's father and they said i'm sorry to tell you he must have had a party last night and things got so crazy he got too drunk or he took drugs he it looks like he was into drugs he had a big party and the parents was like like they didn't know what to do they were freaking out like they can't believe their son is dead but they was like we know for a fact he does not drink alcohol we know our son this just this does not sound like it so they was like we on the way so they got in their car and they drove all the way to New Orleans. So when they get there, y'all, I ain't touch this fried rice because this right here is so good with the bread, the puri, putty, putty. So when they get there, they take pictures. They're taking pictures of uh, the scene and the father finds a blood spot on the door. He takes a picture of it. And he also found more capsules than what the police have found. So the autopsy report showed um, Alcohol poisoning. Uh, so, they're like, no, we're not going to accept that. He did not have no big party. He was not on no drugs. No. And the police was like, this is what it is. So, they ended up labeling the death. The cause of death was accident. And Sean's father was like, nope, I ain't going. I got to lay my son to rest. I'm not about to let y'all label this as an accident when I know for a fact he didn't even drink. So the parents hired a private investigator. To look further into it since the police said it was just an accident. Because it's like, where was his wallet? Where was his phone? Where was the wedding ring? All of this valuable stuff is missing. Of course, the police is looking at it like, he had a party. They probably left him there thinking he was drunk and they, they probably took the money from him. That don't mean they killed him though. So the private investigators found a video from Walmart of uh, three black males and a black female using Sean's uh, debit card. And then they also show a surveillance camera from the apartment at 4.13 in the morning, them driving his car. Uh. Then they took fingerprints from one of the alcohol bottles and a match came. It was a woman by the name of Dominique Berry. And she was well known by the police because she was a prostitute and a scam artist. She'd been in jail for like petty theft, stuff like that. So they take this information to the police and the police is like, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do to help you guys this, because this investigation is now closed. You would think that'd be enough for somebody to give up. Like, I don't got all this information, but his father was like, no, I'm not giving up. He hired more private investigators and just created a team of them. He was even helping them. 
So they looked into the girl, Desiree Berry, and they found out that she ha she is on a dating app. And somebody else has called in on her, which is a man. Another man has went to the police about her and said that he met her on a dating app and he was trying to spice up his relationship. So he wanted a companion for his wife and uh, she was supposed to come over at five o'clock, but she showed up a whole hour early. And so because she showed up early, I just let her in. My wife didn't get home until five and I told her that, but she still came early. We started drinking. She said, I was on my second beer and I just woke up in the hospital. My wife said that when she came home, I was passed out. I was unconscious. And the doctors wouldn't let me leave the hospital because they said that I had been clinically dead for so long. Like, they just want to make sure that I'm okay. Like, I was supposed to lose my life. When I got home, I realized a lot of my cash was gone and all of my credit cards was gone. So I feel like she scammed me. That's the reason why she got there early so that my wife wouldn't like she could just drug me and not two people have to worry about drugging two people. Um, but the police never did anything about it. They're probably looking at it like, you know, and this reminds me, this reminds me of the Tinder swindler, um, uh, true crime that I did about, um, if you haven't seen that, go watch it and you're going to be like, oh my God, like these, that the, these dating apps definitely set you up to, um, like get taken advantage of if you're desperate. They prey on desperate people. But this time it's flipped around. In the Tinder swindler, it was the women getting, desperate women getting swindled. In this true crime, it's desperate men getting swindled. So they look into the phone records and what do you know? The last person that Sean talked to was Dominique. So they take this information to the police and the police is like, yeah, we know her. She actually goes by all these different names. She goes by Jasmine. She goes by uh, Mary Jane. She goes by Destiny. And Desiree. So they put a warrant out for her arrest. They, they put a warrant out for her arrest and they realized that she was uh, already in jail. She was already in jail for identity theft and moving marijuana. So again, the police is like, she already in jail. And so the investigator team that was hired by Sean's father was like, um, we can go to jail and interview her and question her. So that's what they did. And they was asking her like about the things that she do and how this whole scandal thing happens. And she just willingly told them everything. She was like, yeah, it's a scam. She said, I have a pimp. His name is Randy. And I have to, um, I basically, um, my target is desperate men looking for a good time. And when I get there, I get them drunk and I text him DP. DP mean, means drop peel. And when she texts him DP, he walks in and that's when he steals everything and they bounce together. So she ain't even really having sex with them. She's just, she just now getting them drunk. They think they about to have a good time, get drunk and wasted. And they getting set up to get robbed. But she was like, I have never killed nobody. And so they showed her a picture. They said, that they showed her a picture of Sean. They said, does he look familiar? She said, no. So they show him a picture. They show her a picture of him <gasps> dead. And they was like, how about now? And she kind of squinted her eyes like, I don't know. He looks a little familiar, but what this got to do with me? And they was like, because your fingerprints is all over his house. You was the last person that talked to him. And she was like, I ain't kill him though. She was like, that's one thing I don't do. And it was like, okay, well, what about the allegations against you? As far as uh, another guy has said that you, uh, what you met him on a dating app. And you tried to kill him. He ended up in the hospital. And thank God his wife found him. And they, and she was like, um, 
she was like, nah, that could, that wasn't me. She was like, because I don't, she said, I don't never go. If somebody else is going to be there, I don't never, I don't do that. Like, it, they got to be by their self. And it was like, well, then why did, wh wh why are you the last one on his, on Sean's phone call? And they're like, and she was like, well, because I have to talk to them to make sure they, it really is a man. Like, I talk to them first before I even go over there. Remind you, her and Randy just got out of court because a 53-year-old man said the same thing. He took them to court for hooking up off of a dating app and then robbing, um, making him pass out and then robbing him. Does this not also sound like Dorothea, the true crime Dorothea? It was the land, the land, the land house, house landlord, the landlord lady. Go back to that true crime too. I'll link it up here. That sounds just, that's exactly what she was doing to these people. Like this is literally like a modern day Dorothea. She was like, I know for sure he was alive when I left. Like he was snoring. I knocked him out real good. He was snoring. So investigators like, this is it. We have given them so much information. They ain't got no choice but to open this back up and take over from what we've already done. And so they take everything to the police. Like she said this, she said that. Here goes her fingerprints. Here goes the phone calls. Like everything is matching up. And so the police was like, oh, okay, we're going to go back in. They had some medical people, the same people that did the autopsy on him, review everything, review all the papers. And so they changed the cause of death from accident to undetermined. Like undetermined because they said it's still not enough evidence to prove that Randy and Dominique did this. And the fact that Dominique is already in jail, but it's just like, it don't matter. My son has died and there's no justice. So let's keep his name alive. And I'm really hoping for peace on his parents. Post notification goes to, thank you so much for having your post notifications going. Shout out to you for being the first to comment on the, on the last video. If you would like to see more dating app true crimes, then click right here. If you would like to subscribe to this channel so that you never miss another video, then click right here. I love you and I will see you guys in the next mukbang.